Hello guys. Now in this video, uh, in quick tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, the insulin signaling pathway. Now insulin is a very important hormone, one of the most probably one of the most important hormone in our body that is regulating the blood glucose level. We all know that the presence of insulin in blood is very much important for uh, our blood glucose level to be maintained properly. That means if our blood glucose level in, uh, is go, in, in it goes high, it can create certain problems in our body. To prevent that, there is insulin. So if the glucose level is high in blood, insulin will tell the cell that uh, blood glucose level is high. So take up the glucose from blood, store it in cell as converting them into glycogen in muscle cell right in muscle tissues so that's the job of glucose i mean uh, that's the job of insulin it is controlling this glucose in blood uh, using uh, the two important uh, organs of our body that is in the muscles as well as in our liver so it is doing all these things now insulin is secreted by uh, the pancreas and there are different types of pancreatic cells alpha beta and all these type of cells uh, so from the uh, so beta cells of pancreas it is secreted and once the insulin is produced by the cells the insulin at the first it is a kind of immature protein right after the production it has several rounds of uh, broken links i mean several several different side chains are attached with insulin and they are attached with disulfide linkage so what happens actually uh, that once that once it is prepared it is transported into the golgi apparatus in the golgi apparatus those some of those disulfide linkages are cleaved and some of the portions of insulin uh, protein or peptide just released and rest of it is the actual active insulin hormone and that is then bring outside and actually ultimately it is a two different chains linked by a disulfide linkage ultimately at the end and it is discovered by Fred Sanger and he won a Nobel Prize for discovering the structure of insulin. So uh, that's the story about insulin a little bit but we are more focused on how the insulin helps in the regulation of blood glucose in our in our body. The, actually the thing is uh, I, I, insulin can achieve that task by using by, by using several different uh, systems, several different signaling molecules and signaling processes inside uh, but they are all uh, kind of amplifying signals. And the main idea for insulin is to low down the glucose in blood. So, so what are the different options? The options are uh, conversion, conversion of glucose, sorry, conversion of glucose to glycogen. That's the important thing to done to be done because once we convert the glucose into glycogen. Uh, that means the glucose level is now dropping by after uptake uptaking it. So the very first task I must say the very first task is uptake uptake of glucose. That is the most important part uh, played by insulin. It helps the cell to uptake more and more glucose inside the cell. This is the first thing. Second thing is that conversion of the glucose into glycogen, right? Glycogenesis. That is the process. That is important and the third stage or uh, third important process I can say to prevent to prevent any other process which produces glucose in cell by breaking glycogen. So the process called gluconeogenesis remember so prevent gluconeogenesis or neoglucogenesis whatever you say. So these are the major three tasks uh, completed by the presence of insulin in body. So the thing is if I draw the signaling process in a cell, so let's say it's, we imagine with a cell here and there are different different proteins that are present inside the cell which are controlling these different tasks because ultimately the gluconeogenesis involves so many different enzymes uh, and uh, the production of uh, glucose, the uptake of glucose and the processing of glucose and the process of glycolysis, Krebs cycle and all this requires so many different varieties of enzymes inside the cell but there are certain signaling molecules or signaling proteins inside the cell which ultimately tell those proteins which are involving directly in the metabolism of glucose. So in this video we are focusing on those signaling proteins which are the key players because once they are activated they are going to recruit many more proteins they are going to tell many more proteins inside the cell to be activated and uh, take glucose convert them into glycogen or break uh, and, and breakdown of glycogen to be prevented so here it is the cell membrane and the cell membrane there is a receptor like any signaling process the receptor here is called uh, it is called let's say let me draw it this way this receptor is called uh, the insulin receptor or IR and insulin will come and attach to this re receptor so this is insulin insulin 
So insulin binds with the insulin receptor or IR that is present in cell membrane. So once it is bound, it will bring upon uh, the other, other molecules like GRB. Remember, GRB is a very important signaling, uh, sorry, so GRB2. So once GRB is attached to that, now the GRB will further activate a protein called AKT. Remember, a protein called AKT. Right? And the activation of AKT is through the process called another protein that is called PI3 kinase or protein uh, phosphatidyl inositol uh, 3. So triphosphatidyl inositol that is the PI3. So PI3 kinase is getting activated. So once PI3 kinase is activated, remember this is a kinase and we know kinase can activate other proteins inside the cell because they are phosphorylating agent so they can phosphorylate others and this PIC kinase used to present in cell membrane because uh, phosphatidyl inositol that's a kind of lipid that is embedded inside the membrane so if I draw that embedded inside the membrane so here it is the phosphatidyl inositol so this phosphatidyl inositol will activate a protein here that is that is called AKT and this AKT is also a kinase. So PIC kinase will activate AKT by adding the phosphate group to it. So once the AKT is activated, now this is the key player here, AKT or AKT kinase. Once the AKT is activated here, the AKT will further activate many different types of many different types of transcription factors. Now those transcription factors are extremely important and must required uh, for the transcription of a desired gene in eukaryotic cell. So once the transcription factors are activated, so transcription factors are activated, those transcription factors are taken and they, they will move inside the cell, inside the, sorry, inside the nucleus and then they will help in the transcription of the desired gene. Now in this case, the desired gene is to production of all those important proteins to produce to convert glucose into glycogen so this process will be taken forward as well as what we require we need to shut down the synthesis of all those proteins which helps in gluconeogenesis so this is all task that is done and also they help in production of a protein called GLUT4 or GLUT4 whatever you say the protein called GLUT4 because this is the a channel uh, protein that is present in the membrane which helps in which helps in uptake of glucose, helps in the uptake of glucose. So they will produce more and more GLUT4 and those GLUT4s are added there due to this whole, whole pathway, whole signaling process by insulin. And as there are more GLUT4 there present in the cell membrane, more and more glucose will be uptaken inside the cell. And, and by doing that, the blood glucose level will go down to the normal. Once the blood glucose level is normalized, then again, this whole system is again shut off and the signaling will be shut off and then because there will be less insulin once there are uh, very uh, I mean the insulin work is done and they will release this place and the position will uh, will come back to the original form. So during this process this AKT activates certain genes and deactivates certain genes so if we look at here the activation and deactivation by AKT here it activates it activates uh, mTOR. mTOR is a very important protein mTOR1. So once mTOR1 is activated this mTOR further activate a protein called SREB right 1C so this is the protein now this is a kind of all this type of transcription factor proteins it will go inside nucleus and activate certain genes produce GLUT4 and all these things and also it, it produces it, it, it also helps in the production of uh, say say They also helps in production of ACE160. This is another protein. Again, that helps in the uh, in the conversion of glucose into glycogen and all this. And also, it, this AKT also prevent uh, the uh, uh, the production of FOS production of FOS because FOS is a gene which is responsible for the anti effect. Uh, that is that we are going to establish. So they will also shut down. So it's not only job to activate the proteins that we want uh, to have, uh, want to see the result, but also it's very important to shut off the, the uh, I mean, uh, expression of the proteins or expression of those genes which are responsible for any anti-effect present there. 
right so in a sense this is how insulin signaling works and this is a kind of very basic way i'm giving the idea about how the signaling works in the different stages but actually uh, if you look at the different stages of how how we convert glucose into glycogen and all these there are more signaling like they activates protein kinase they activate phosphorylase kinase protein kinase a and many more kinase protein inside so if you want to know all these different details you you need to refer to different videos that in my channel you will see how this whole process works but actually this is in a sense how our insulin signaling process works and i hope that's helpful for you if you like the video please subscribe hit a like and share this video with your friends in social networks and uh, i hope uh, that's going to help you all the best